Well, it's called the map that changed the world, the William Smith Strata Map. And with me to talk about that is Edmund Nicholas, who is the Executive Secretary of the Geological Society of London, and George Davis, who is a professor at the University of Arizona. And gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. I appreciate Pleasure. that. How did this map change the world, and who was William Smith, Edmund? Well, H William Smith, he's born in a place called Churchill in Oxfordshire in the late 18th century. He has a rudimentary education. He learns to be a surveyor, and simply in making canals, he begins to make observation. Here is a sketch of the map behind us, which he did in 1801. And it's based on his observations, his collection of fossils. And what was the map showing, or what intended, at the end of the day, George, what do you think William Smith was thinking as, as he did this kind of preparation? to develop this beautiful work. He knew that his livelihood as a consultant was based upon understanding the soils, the water, the drainages, the springs, and he recognized that the bedrock geology controlled all of that. And so his intellectual property became one of understanding the relationship of the fundamental layers of the earth relative to natural resources and sources of springs and soils. When you're digging canals that run along the topography for miles and miles, you're basically, he was discovering that these layers of rock were continuous over miles and miles. And that it, it occurred to him that basically you could trace units and project them into the subsurface if he could recognize and distinguish one stratum from another. I think that was his aha moment. So what does the map show us? Or what did the map show people back then? It shows you basically the rock units, but he makes annotations. He's showing where you can find coal, ironstone, clayers which you can use to seal the canal. It's a very much a practical thing. And in some senses, what he did, what he shows graphically, literally fuels the English Industrial Revolution. Because the need, as now, is for cheap energy. So he's showing where you can find coal. And George, is that the part that changed the world? That certainly changed Britain, but how did it change the world? It changed, it changed, first of all, the world of earth sciences and geology and natural history because he basically underscored the fact that there are such stratigraphic systematics in any given region that it's going to be possible in the future to apply the same kind of methodology to any part of the world, and now we're applying it to the seafloor bottom. And so there's a fundamental kind of analytical approach to discerning the distribution of natural resources and for exhuming Earth history and ultimately the history of life. It's an extraordinary piece of work, uh, and I appreciate your insights into this. Uh, happy anniversary. Uh, 200 thank years you. in the making, and thank you for joining us with this explanation. Pleasure. We have talked to some of the leading names in the geosciences here at GSA 2015, but we have the man with us today. William Smith, of all people, drops in in Baltimore. It's so good to see you. It's it looks great pleasure. for your age, sir. Uh, tell me about this fantastic work that you did, the map that changed the world. Well, I was obsessed with this project. Come what may, uh, whether I had support or I did not, I knew this was the right thing to do. Making my map drove me bankrupt. I went to prison for 10 weeks uh, as a result uh, of having no money and not being able to pay uh, my creditors. So I financed my own work. After we'd finished the big one, we produced these smaller maps of separate counties. And the purpose of all of these maps was to improve the utility of the land. Well, I'm so glad it worked out well for you, and uh, we're very privileged to have you here in Baltimore. Thank you very much. <laughs> <All> right, <sir. laughs>